This year is shaping up to being a great year for gaming. Remakes of our dreams and masterpieces big budget and indie alike abound, but the thing closest to my heart has to be the resurgence of everything rare. This comeback actually sort of began around the time of E3 2013 when Donkey Kong Country and Killer Instinct, two big names that Rare shaped, got all new installments in their series. And from then on, Rare's been in the public eye a lot more often and in many different ways. Battletoads and Shovel Knight, Conquering Project Spark, Rare veterans getting to work on old properties again, I can't remember the last time their name's been this relevant. Throughout their 30 year history, they've had their ups and their downs, and I'd say that this is one of their strongest years yet. Not just for the studio, but for everyone involved with Rare, and especially for the fans. Last year when there were rumblings of Rare making something uniquely them, I was of course excited to see what it could be. Whatever it was, I was hoping that it'd be something that would make my X-Bone purchase worthwhile. Yes, I actually got one, and Killer Instinct is great and all, but I wanted something more. And that's what I got at E3 this year with Rare Replay. This is quite possibly the best bargain I've ever seen for a video game collection. 30 of Rare's greatest games, many of which aren't easily obtainable anywhere else, all for $30 and 50 gigabytes of free space, but that price is amazing. Conker's Bad Fur Day is part of this collection, and I've seen that game go for hundreds of dollars online, so for those who don't have it, now you can get it for essentially a buck. That alone makes this collection a steal. Sure, DK's not here, but all of his games are on the Nintendo eShop, so that's alright, I guess. But this collection really piqued my interest as it gives me the chance to play through Rare's post-Nintendo catalog in one convenient place. I've heard good things about Ghoulies, I'm very familiar with Viva Pinata through the cartoon, so it should be fun revisiting that world, and Nuts and Bolts, I'm also excited to delve into. We all know it's not what people wanted from a third banjo game, but it still looks like a great title in and of itself, and if anything, I'm sure the writing and music will get me through just fine. And if that's not enough, the collection has a slew of extra features, one of which being an hour-long Rare documentary talking about the development of some of their biggest hits, plus some info on games that never saw the light of day. It's been far too long since Rare truly embraced their past like this, and there's no better time to do so than during their 30th anniversary. But they're not just looking back, oh no, they've got some big things planned for their future too. In what's said to be their most ambitious game yet, Sea of Thieves looks like it's definitely going to live up to that claim. And it's nice to see Rare doing something different nowadays. Though I will admit that when I first saw the trailer for it, I was kinda disappointed to not see an old IP like Banjo or Battletoads. Heck, I was crazy enough to think it was Saberman for a second. But I've really warmed up to the idea of whatever Sea of Thieves is going to turn out to be. We've seen a lot of pirate elements in Rare games over the years. One could say they pretty much did a pirate game already, so it's pretty cool to see them go all out with the entire concept. They even went so far as to get a mascot for the game on its own Twitter handle. An honest to goodness skeleton that goes by the name Captain Bo and he is, he is just wonderful. I don't know who is behind this Twitter, but they're a reminder that Rare's sense of humor is alive and well, which is kind of ironic considering well, you know. Since E3, Rare's been taking Captain Bones pretty much everywhere they go, and he even answers questions on the aforementioned Twitter page. And let me just say that nearly every post from this Twitter has had me laughing like an idiot at just how absurd they are. And if Sea of Thieves doesn't turn out to be something I'll play, Captain Bones is good enough for me. However, if we get into the stuff I know I want to play, we have to go outside of Rare. At least physically, not spiritually. I am of course trying to segue into talking about Ukulele, an all new 3D platformer from the creative team that defined that genre. I've been keeping tabs on this game since its announcement, and from what's been shown so far, I couldn't get any more excited for it without going certifiably insane. Though some may think I'm already halfway there. I'm very glad that its Kickstarter not only managed to meet all of its stretch goals, but got its initial goal in just under an hour. Now all the people who said that no one wants a game like this anymore can just sit and watch all the money they could have made go to someone that really deserves it. One thing I like about this game is that while it's a spiritual successor to Banjo, it's got an identity of its own too. It doesn't feel as not Banjo Kazooie as say Mighty Number no. 9 feels not Mega Man and Bloodstained not Castlevania. Even though this game's title is a pretty good argument that it is, but I don't get that vibe from Ukulele, and I'm glad I don't. Gameplay aside, one reason I love the games I do is because of the characters themselves. I mean, if there was a Donkey Kong Country spiritual successor, 
concert with a bunch of knockoff apes, I don't think I'd like it as much because while it may play and sound like DK, it's not DK no matter how much you sugarcoat it. I love Donkey Kong and his buddies and I want to see them in the limelight. And I never grew up with Banjo like most others, but I love him just the same and I want to see him and Kazooie back in action as much as the next guy. But Yuka and Laylee are really great characters too. They don't feel like replacements. To me, they're another platforming duo that could rise to great things like the duos before them. And it's great to see new rare-esque characters from the team known for creating such memorable characters to begin with. This game is being done in a way that doesn't feel like just a continuation of Banjo. More like a continuation of all things rare. The Platonic team is taking all the best bits from their past experiences and melding them into ukulele for what can only be an amazing end product. And I'm usually very nervous with Kickstarter games from their inception to completion if they even make it that far. But with this game, I have no doubt that these guys will deliver. They've had 100 years of experience between them all, and they were making revolutionary stuff in their early years. So I'm sure this will be even better now. It gives me a warm feeling knowing that the guys who made these kinds of games are back together again, doing what they do best and how they did it best. And back at Rare, even though things are still pretty early and up in the air, it seems like they're making a triumphant and proper return to form. For a company that's been around my entire life, supplied me with some of my very first and favorite games ever, and has inspired me to do so much creatively, I'm so glad to see them still going strong with the same kind of love and passion they had when they first started out. We've come a long, long way together, through both the hard times and the good. But now, we really have to celebrate them, and praise them like we should. Hey everybody, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it. So if you liked it, be sure to give it a like, a favorite, share it with your friends, all the other good stuff. Apparently, it's a really nice gesture. And if you want to see more stuff from me, be sure to subscribe and check out my social media outlets so you'll know firsthand when a video of mine comes out, as well as other crazy shenanigans I may be up to. And if you're still here, feel free to check out some other videos I did. I'm really fond of the one where I sang his Meowth from the Pokemon anime. It was, it's tear-jerking and hilarious at the same time. So with all that said, I will see you guys next time. Cheers! Oh, and uh, Battletoads are in Killer Instinct now, so uh, let the hype commence! <laughs>